families. Wow, um, what a day I've had out here in beautiful Colorado. Super, super nice weather. Um, it's just so odd to me that it is uh, February and we're having like 60 degree days. So anyway, I just wanted to um, really thank Natasha for asking me. It was just kind of like, wow, am I really, um, is this something that, you know, we're, we're really got some things that we need to talk about. So, um, so thank you, Kimberly, and thank you, Marcy, for being here. Um, so if you don't know me, um, you know, please drop your name in the chat bar and uh, please let me know where you're coming from so that I can um, reach out to you guys. So again, I want to thank Natasha for asking me to uh, get on here and to talk with you um, guys about money and about business. I know for the last two nights, um, Kimberly and Tiffany have talked more on the personal side of finance. And uh, I'm going to talk more tonight on the business side of finance. So, um, so there's a few things that I just, you know, I want to, you know, kind of let you guys in on. So, um, a little bit of background about me. I've been a bookkeeper for about 35 years. I have always worked for someone else. And in the last uh, year and a half, I was really encouraged to take my bookkeeping knowledge and, um, and start a business. Hey Janelle, thanks for being here. Um, so I uh, began, you know, kind of looking at the idea of actually having a business, but um, very unsure that I could do this, and um, a little, a little scared, and uh, in my opinion, a little old, and uh, I just wasn't sure that this was, you know, this was the right time and this was the right thing to do. Um, but with uh, a whole lot of encouragement um, from my friends and my family. Um, it was like, okay, so, um, so I jumped and I, um, you know, quit my corporate America job and started a bookkeeping business and, um, you know what, I couldn't be happier doing this. It has given me the flexibility to do the things that I want to do and to just, um, uh, you know, do what I do best, which is bookkeeping. Thank you, Danelle. Um, and help people and, um, and do it on my own time and be able to spend time with my kids and, um, and my adopted grandkids that I have this week and so so anyway so I just wanted to chat with you guys a little bit about actual business finances so my first real question is is do you have a business so the people that are you know the hopping on here um, and you may be watching this as a replay um, but do you have some type of a small business and if so when you started that small business were you thinking about your finances or did you just have a grand idea and you went, hey, cool, I got this grand idea and I'm going to put it in place and I'm going to go to work. And they never even thought about, um, you know, about anything that had to do with their financial wellness. Hey, Nye. Hey, Kim. Um, and that is what I see when a lot of the small business people that I have been working with over the last year is that they've got a grand idea and they just like start and then... Um, you know, two, three, six months down the road, they are like, have no clue how their business is doing because they're not keeping track of anything. So there's just a few things that I just kind of wanted to um, begin to help you guys think about. If you've got a small business, um, when you started this small business, did you just like pick a name and, and start? Or did you think about um, registering this name? It is a good idea that you register your name with the state, whatever the state is that you live in, and um, to make sure that that name doesn't pop up appear, you know, someplace else. We certainly, you, if you want people Googling you and finding you, um, it's best to know that you're the only business out there with that name, and if you don't register it, then somebody else may have it and somebody else may be using it. Um, and so if people are going looking for whatever it is that you're doing, they're going looking for, um, somebody that's not even there. Um, yes, Nye, I would actually register your networking marketing business too. Um, and I know I, I actually did a network marketing business um, at one point and I ran it strictly under my name for a little bit and then I actually um, opened up an LLC 
and I'll talk a little bit about more about that um, in a few minutes but I actually started that just so that all of my income and everything was going through that LLC um, and that way again if people were at least looking for me I mean the the name did have my last name in it so it was you know it was linked to me um, but it just made it a little bit cleaner and when you start looking at some of the financial things and the liability things having a business name um, outside of your personal name is a great idea hey Heidi how are you um, you know what I don't know about Canada um, I uh, you the guys that that I'm you know working with in the inner circle that are from Canada um, I really don't know I'll try to do some research and see if I can reach out to some people um, that have done some business in Canada and see if they have any any idea but I don't know uh, for sure now if that you know that does apply to you know it being in Canada so the next thing that um, that happens with people a lot is they go to register their name and you Google register a business and you end up in legal legal zoom or some other type of um, pay for it um, site in which they walk you through all of this they never tell you they're gonna charge you and you get all the way through there and then all of a sudden they're gonna charge you three hundred and fifty dollars to file your business name um, don't do that um, most states are super simple to walk it through um, but you need to actually go to the Secretary of State to file um, your business name um, and in the state of Colorado that's a $10 charge um, and they don't ask any questions that you don't already know they need to know your name they need to know your address they will ask you your social security number they'll ask you what type of business that you want to do so again um, you, you don't have to have you know some legal thing to have done um, it's you know it's pretty simple uh, you know to put together in the first place so then the question always becomes well do I file as a or do I get my name as a sole proprietor or do I have to file an LLC or do I get an S Corp or what do I do with all of that um, because people again they have no real um, understanding of those um, and my best answer is is that really is a personal um, discussion that you need to have with an accountant and with a lawyer because depending on your personal assets there may be a purpose of having um, a, a S Corp also depending on the amount of income that you currently have coming in there may be some tax benefits as well as there are some good legal benefits um, of having a bigger umbrella is what I call it um, you get a small umbrella by putting the LLC over it and you get a bigger umbrella by putting the S Corp over it um, again small businesses um, most small businesses you know the filing of an S Corp um, is quite expensive and not normally necessary right when you start um, and so then some of the other th questions that then come up of okay so I'm gonna open this business I'm gonna start um, doing my service or my um, uh, selling my product and then it's like well where am I gonna work is this gonna be a home-based business that you're gonna do is this do you need to go fire do you need to go rent an office then do you have to pay for utilities um, you know all of those various questions that come up and again people don't think you know a little bit into the business they just had again the grand idea and let's get started and um, and here we are and then am I gonna have employees well I, I think maybe I would like to hire somebody well can my business afford to hire somebody because when you go to hire employees then all of a sudden you need um, unemployment insurance and you need workman's compensation insurance and you need all these various things that again you didn't you, you know, it just wasn't there um, so you didn't really think about um, having it uh, so those are just some thoughts you know that you need to you know keep in mind um, and then I'm getting I'm really glad that Heidi happens to be on here Heidi and I are going to do um, a combined um, video here next week uh, about insurance and I was completely in the same boat that most of you are in do I need insurance I'm working a bookkeeping business out of my home I don't think I need insurance I mean nobody's coming to my house so I don't worry about somebody tripping and falling and suing me um, but after having a conversation with Heidi she informed me that I really do need some um, personal liability or some professional liability insurance um, with what I'm doing so um, those are things that again you 
you, you don't really think about. I didn't think about that a year ago until I was actually having a conversation recently um, from somebody and then I was like, hmm, wonder if I should have that. So um, again, those are just some suggestions when you're gonna start your business, you know, think about those things and you know, begin to prepare. Um, so the next piece to starting that business is now you've gotten a business name and you've filed it and you've done you know the the pre work of having a business now what are you going to do with the finance stuff that comes in what are you going to do with your income how are you going to track your expenses um, and the goal is to have some type of a system so that at the end of the year when you go to file your taxes that this isn't a nightmare um, and many of you out there go, uh, yeah, I've been in that nightmare. You've done absolutely nothing for the past year or years, and now you need to try to figure out how to file taxes, and you don't even know where to begin, and it becomes seriously overwhelming. And, um, and so, again, if you begin, yeah, ugh, nah, that is exactly right. Um, and I, I hear um, Nadia Melton says the word nightmare a lot when we first started talking. Um, and so, and thank you, Heidi. Yep, and hire an expert. We're going to talk about that, too. Um, so, you know, so again, so let's let's talk about how how do we begin to, you know, put things together. So if you've got income coming in, you need your own checking account or your own savings account for your business. Um, you do not want to, as I call it, commingle your business expenses and your business stuff into your personal account or vice versa. Once you do have a business account, you do not want to be commingling your personal stuff out of your business account. Um, and maybe you're a business that has very few transactions. You know, maybe you um, are a network marketer and you get a expense, uh, a commission check once a month, and you have two or three expenses that go out. You know, you buy some product, and um, you know you've got your internet, and um, you know maybe you know some a few little office things, but you don't have a whole lot of expenses, and so. When you start thinking about it, it's like, well, wow, do I need to um, do I need to go buy software, or you know, how how do I do this? Um, and I have a lot of people that you know, it's like break it down and make it easy to um, it, to yourself. It's like I actually have you know a simple Excel spreadsheet, and certainly if anybody out there is interested in having that, let me know. I'm certainly glad to send it to you. Um, it's just a simple Excel spreadsheet that. Um, I put the formulas in, you enter the amount of income that you have coming in, and then you um, itemize out your expenses per month, and it figures it all there, and at the end of the month, you can see your income minus your expenses, which should helpfully, hopefully show you, you know, are, are you making any money? And if you do that and every month and then at the end of the year, again, it's not that nightmare of having to go back and figure all of that. Now maybe you're a business that, you know, there's more to, uh, there's more to doing. Uh, maybe you have, uh, you know, people are paying you. And again, there, there brings up, you know, another piece to this. How are they paying you? Uh, are people sending you checks? Are you, did you set up a PayPal account or a Square account or, you know, some, some way that your money is coming in? So how does that money actually come to you? Then is there a drop, you know, once a month or is it every day? Um, and then maybe you have a business that you need to keep track of. You, you know, you've got um, a social media business in which you've got two or three different types of uh, media stuff going on in the background of keeping track of your emails keeping um, track of um, website stuff, you've got office stuff, you know, going on, you're going to go, you know, buy a new printer, you um, have your own telephone, um, you've got a whole bunch of advertising going out. Maybe you have a whole lot of expenses and you want to be able to see them better and break them down. Um, and maybe the Excel sheet's just a little not enough. Um, so then it becomes about buying a, some software or hiring it to have it done. And, um, and for some people, you know, hiring to have it done isn't, you're, you're not there yet. And so you go to buy software. And this is something that I've seen several times is, um, I have a gentleman that I work for right now, runs a small heating and air conditioning company who went to Best Buy and said to Best Buy, I need um, some accounting software. 
So they sold him the $500, the upgraded version of QuickBooks, which is a wonderful program, but he didn't need a $500 version. Um, it was way more than what he um, would really be doing. And so again, um, here, here he is with $500 in software and he has no idea how to use it. None. He knows how to turn it on and that was about all. He didn't know how to get his business name in there. He couldn't, uh, he, he just didn't really understand the setup um, in which is in the end how he hired me because he was looking for somebody, you know, to help him set it up. Then his plan was that he was going to do it himself and I was just going to show him how to do some things and he was going to do it himself. Um, well, that lasted probably all of about two days because he realized that, again, he doesn't understand the software, so it's really hard for him to figure out how to make an invoice and how to pay the bills. So, um, so, here's, a, you know, so here's somebody that went out, bought a product, and can't use it. Um, so I suggest if you're going to use an accounting software, check it out. Don't ask the Best Buy salesman because she'll sell you the most top of the line item. Check with people, other people um, that are in business that use software. Uh, reach out to um, friends, um, you know, that may be using uh, something. Feel free, of course, to reach out to me if you have any questions. I am more than glad to give you the pros and the cons of the types of software that I um, have used. Hey, Stephen Walker, how are you? Um, now, my personal opinion is QuickBooks Online. Um, I really like the product. I have been a QuickBooks user all my life. And uh, not, not all my life because back at some point in time, we didn't even have software as Marcy and I discuss all the time. We did it by chisel and hammer, not really, but we actually long-handed a lot of things. Um, but QuickBooks Online is just a super product um, and most of the reason that I like it is that it's up to date at all times. I don't have to update it again next year. I don't have to um, you know, worry that it's not working to the best of its ability um, because it is. It's in its online and it's working. Um, the other thing that I like about it is that your data is living in a cloud and that freaks some people out um, because they're like, oh my gosh, I don't want my financial data, you know, living out there. Well, um, QuickBooks actually has an entire department that their job every day is to try to break into their own software. Um, so there's actually people getting paid at QuickBooks. Uh, to hack into their software and when somebody can hack in I'm sure you know somebody gets a prize or something But that's the whole idea behind it is that you know they're making it as, so as uh, solid and as safe as it can possibly be um, The desktop version is nice, but then you're tied to the desk um, And that's the thing that's the other piece is like if I came to Kimberly's house and I wanted to look at my own accounting while I was there, I certainly could. I could hop on her computer, log into the website, and, and use it. Um, and with the amount of traveling I do, it works really nice because, again, I don't have it stuck on my house computer. I, you know, can be on my laptop. I will be at Danelle's all weekend working on my laptop. Um, so those are some of the real pros that I really like about QuickBooks. There are some other software out there, Peachtree. Um, I can't even think of what the other one's called. I haven't dabbled much in those um, because they're not as user-friendly as uh, QuickBooks is. And while I say it's user-friendly, it's user-friendly, but you need some type of knowledge about how accounting works. Um, it is super easy. You click on the customer button, you enter the information, but if you don't have the idea kind of behind where it's going, it makes it just a little bit difficult um, if you get yourself in a bind because you're not really sure you know, how that works. Um, so again, reach out, um, ask people about the software um, before you go and spend that type of money. So the other piece to um, tracking your stuff is expenses. How are people, or how are you going to pay for expenses? Are you going to write a check? Are you going to have a debit card? Are you going to pay through PayPal? Um, how are you going to do this? And then it comes down to the receipts. And um, earlier in the year, I did a whole um, video on receipts and keeping receipts, and it's very necessary. And again, that's something I see with small businesses. They're like, I was supposed to keep the receipts? I had no idea. Um, and again, if the IRS were to audit you and you don't have a receipt to back it up, then that expense is null and void. 
So let's just say you went and bought a nice $500 printer, Office Depot. You can't prove you bought it because you didn't keep the receipt. You no longer have a tax deduction. So keeping the receipts is necessary. Now, while I say keeping the receipts is necessary, the other piece to that is that you may take a picture of the receipt. Um, some people just take a picture of the receipt, they send it to their computer. Some people use a program called Receipt Bank. Um, and other people, which is me, uh, because I use QuickBooks Online, it actually has a mobile app. And so when I go to make a purchase using my um, debit card or um, uh, writing a check or whatever, I can actually take a picture of the receipt or the check, enter the little information in, press save, and it automatically throws it directly into my QuickBooks program. So that's really necessary, um, you know, to, to keeping those receipts. Um, also, the other thing is about taking a picture of it is it's going to be in a much better shape than that um, receipt that you took seven years ago that's now been sitting in a box that more than likely you may or may not still be able to see. So, um, you know, so you need to, you know, again, determine how you're going to keep track of that, whether it is actually to keep the receipt. And if you're going to keep the receipt, where are you going to file them? Do you have some type of filing system set up? Um, I've been in several offices that have men working in there. Stephen, not, I'm not going um, to damn the men, but um, men don't really have that knowledge of or want to or whatever of keeping things in some type of order. Um, the one office that I went to, I asked the gentleman, where did this deposit come from? And he just looked at me like I spoke a foreign language because he had no idea where the money came from. Uh, it might be, it was from one of their clients, but you know he didn't really know um, again we we need to have some type of knowledge about keeping track of that type of stuff um, so again, food for thought about if I'm going to have this, what am I going to do, and how am I going to do it and how do you even know if you're making a profit if you're not keeping track of your money? Um, how do you know if um, you made any money? How do you know how much money you spent? on a certain thing. I just had a, um, a client call me today that is starting a new project that she is doing some uh, Facebook um, ads that she wants me to track those Facebook ads separately from her advertising because she wants to see exactly how much she spent doing this particular promo that she's getting ready to do. Um, and again, if you're not tracking it, you'd have no way of knowing that and you know, is it worthwhile? So know your numbers and to know your numbers you must have some type of a system in place. And the third thing that I want to talk about that I see a lot in small businesses is the mistakes that um, you know that they make along the way um, and probably the biggest one is commingling and I touched a little bit on that earlier and um, I have a client who continues to believe that commingling is fine it's just not a big deal and um, he runs a corporation, he runs a franchise in which his mom has a American Express card and Aunt Mary has an American Express card and everybody has an American Express card and so when I go to do his books I have no idea what is really personal and what is business and uh, so it's a nightmare on my end but it is also could be a legal mess um, and I chatted with a lawyer um, um, that's on Danelle's um, page, Andrew, and he explained it as if you're, if you're paying your personal bills through your business, so we're just going to FYI, you're making your house payment or your car payment through there, you get sued for whatever the thing may be, you do not have, you know, everything's in a sole proprietor, it's in your personal name, and the court goes, well, let's see your books because you say you don't have any, I don't have any assets. So, um, but you're making your house payment through there. So it really makes it look like your company owns your house. So they call it piercing the corporate veil um, because that's what a corporation does. So it's really a good idea to not be commingling your money because if you really don't, if your company does not really have any assets and you were to be sued, they can't go after your personal assets because you're not actually um, paying for them through your business. So the commingling thing is, is a huge no-no. 
Um, I preach this a lot. Go get a business account. I had someone ask the other day, well, what happens if I don't have any income yet? I said, that's fine. If you don't have any income, go to the bank and write yourself your from your personalness to your um, business, $50, open an account so that that's where your income can go or that's where your expenses are going to come from. And if you have to front the money from yourself personally into your business, that is okay. But you want to keep that separate so that again, if there's any issues, it's all coming out of your business. So there's my spiel on commingling. Don't be doing it. I know I am, I feel like I am preaching, Heidi. I'm like, wow, that was just kind of like a little overboard on the commingling thing. I'm going to give me a big stop sign. I got to go find me one for that. Um, and I think the last piece to um, what I see that people do is that they don't ask for help when they're in a when they're in a bind. Um, there are many people out there, small businesses, you don't have any money so you're certainly you're not going to go to a training or you're not going to hire out your help and you're just going to go buy some software and you're going to and you're going to, you know, give it your best shot. Well, is what tends to happen is you get yourself in such a mess in the end that had you have even taken a class or hired somebody to do some personal tutoring, you'd have saved so much money in the long run um, on the mess you've created. Um, prime example is I have a client who um, did not have anybody helping him with his bookkeeping in which they were trying to do payroll and they sort of did payroll. Sometimes it went into the payroll account, sometimes it didn't. Sometimes it, hey Sheena James, how are you tonight? Um, sometimes the checks were written but they really didn't go through payroll. Um, in the end, they had almost six months worth of payroll that was a complete mess. Um, so I personally hire out payroll. I hire a third party named Gusto. It's just a payroll company. They're very cheap. It's $39 a month plus $6 per employee. And if there's only one or two of you, it's pretty cheap. So had this gentleman have we did we had done that had he have set it up he might have paid fifty dollars a month with the amount of employees he had um, after six months worth of a complete mess that he had um, it cost him almost a thousand dollars for me to clean it up and he just spent if he just been spending you know fifty dollars a month times six that's three hundred in comparison to the thousand that it costs for me to clean it up um, I had to go in and delete checks and then I had to work with QuickBooks on the back end because you can only go back for so many um, months um, before you know they kind of lock it down um, so again if there's something you don't understand about the program you're using take class call somebody and get some personal training I do a lot of personal training of just sitting down and working with the individual on what they need done Many people, um, I find, or will go to, and, and QuickBooks is, is notorious for doing this, they offer these seminars and they're seven, eight hundred dollars. Hey, Michelle Rutt, how are you tonight? Um, seven, eight hundred dollars to go take a, um, a class, and at the, then when you go take the class, they're talking, first of all, over your head, and second off, they're showing you things that is more than likely not even something that you do. Um, a lot of small businesses are not concerned with an accounts receivable because they don't have people making payments to them. They are strictly, you know, taking money in, taking money out. So you don't have to go through a big accounts receivable. Um, accounts payable, same way. Some people, it's just, you know, the few little debit card transactions. You don't need to know how to enter a bill and then go through bill pay to pay it. Um, again, that is so over, you know, over the top of what some people need. Um, so I do suggest, you know, some personalized training. It will, again, probably save you money in the long run just for the fact that, um, like when I go to somebody's office, I sit down and I'm like, okay, show me what you do to enter an invoice. Show me what you do to pay the bills. Show me how you balance the checkbook because I want to help them fix the things that they are doing, not showing them how to do something that in the end is not something that they're, you know, wanting to do at all. Um, let me just glance through my notes, make sure that I have kind of clicked on everything. I think that, oh, yep, and here's the end of it. It's the procrastination thing. So you got a business, 
and you're going to keep track of all of this stuff. Well, maybe you're going to keep track of it, but they really don't, and it sits in a pile, and now it's the end of the year, and now you've got a mess because now you are completely overwhelmed and you don't know where to start. And once you begin to get back into things, you don't remember because maybe you kept receipts and maybe you didn't keep receipts. And so what is this? What did I buy at Amazon? Was that like an office thing? Oh, oh wait a minute. Was that when I part bought that thing for my daughter? Again, that goes back to the commingling and then you can't remember. And so in the end, you end up losing expenses that you could have because you let it go and then you you, you can't remake it or you lost them. Yes, that's that's perfect. And I um, that happens, too. Um, so not procrastinating on this stuff. Begin and make a, um, you know, make a plan. It's like I've started a business. Okay, so you've started a business and you know that on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you know, you're going to make all these marketing phone calls. Well, maybe on Friday, then you need to, you know, take an hour and, you know, take care of your receipts and take care of, you know, making sure that things are done so that, again, you know your numbers, you know how to make your business more profitable because you can see where you're spending money, you understand where your money's going that you are spending. Um, and so, and that's the thing that, you know, that's probably the, you know, one of the major things that I find is that people, and, and they, like I said, they lose out on, um, expenses that they could take. And, um, you know, in the end it's just because I procrastinated and I didn't really do it. And, um, so set up a system when you get started, know your, know your numbers, not yes, yes. Um, you and I hear that preached quite often because that's one of Danelle's favorite quotes. I gotta find me a quote that goes with that for, for my business. So, um, I hope you guys got some value out of this. I've so enjoyed, and again, I want to uh, thank Natasha for asking me to, um, to get on here and do this for Excellent Families. If you're listening to this um, after the fact, Please feel free to reach out to me if you've got any questions concerning, you know, setting up your bookkeeping. Um, just, you know, need some information on um, uh, software, um, ideas that I have of, you know, making, like I said, I've got an Excel spreadsheet. I, I'm more than welcome to, um, you know, send that to anyone. If there's just any way I can help you, you know, please let me know. And, um, if, you know, if this was a value to you, please share it out. I'm sure that we all know others who are starting small businesses or have started small businesses who could possibly, um, you know, need a little guidance along the way. So I want to thank everybody from Excellent Families for hopping on here tonight. Um, this has been a whole lot of fun. And uh, yes, Kim, I will see you next week. So thanks everybody for joining and have a really great night. Thanks.